they say, life is 10% what happens to you and 90% Fridays are awesome. Something like that. Welcome to CNN 10. I'm Carl Azus. It's great to have you watching. As we put this show together, a super typhoon was whirling toward the nation of Japan. Its name is Typhoon Hagibis. It's called a super typhoon because it's especially powerful. On Thursday, Hagibis was the equivalent of a Category 5 hurricane, the strongest classification. If it shifts direction as forecasters expect it to, this storm could come very close to the Japanese capital of Tokyo on Saturday. Meteorologists think it will have weakened by then, but Hagibis is on track to make landfall right near where Typhoon Foxeye hit in September. That storm reportedly killed three people and caused more than $7 billion in damage. Super Typhoon Hagibis is expected to bring heavy rain to much of south-central Japan. Near the coast, forecasters are concerned about a potentially large storm surge, a rise in seawater levels pushed ashore by a storm. And Hagibis has already had an impact on the Rugby World Cup. It's being held in Japan this year, and some matches have been canceled as the storm approaches. On the other side of the Pacific, General Motors, the automotive company that makes Buick, Cadillac, Chevy, it's in the midst of the car industry's longest strike in decades. The union, representing almost 50,000 workers, is negotiating with GM over issues like wages and profit sharing. And a big hang-up between the two sides is over production in Mexico. GM has four factories there and 33 in the United States. But the company is planning to close four U.S. plants, and the union wants production in Mexico shifted back to the U.S. One industry expert says that would come at a heavy cost to GM. The strike has been going on for 25 days. 10 second trivia. The first known kites have been traced back to what country? China, India, Egypt, or Australia? Though the exact origin of the kite isn't known, historians believe they were first used in China. They fly like the wind, but can kites be used to gather electricity from it? There are a number of companies experimenting with this idea. It requires huge kites that fly high enough to catch the steady winds in our atmosphere and then transfer that energy back to Earth. There are concerns about the amount of maintenance they'd need, the threat they could pose if they crash, and what would happen in bad weather. But if everything goes right... Some of the world's strongest winds are found here, out on the ocean where water is too deep for most offshore wind turbines. But a company called Makani believes it has a solution, with a new wind technology inspired by a familiar child's toy, the kite. To me, it almost looks like an airplane. What makes it a kite? You know, when you fly a kite in the park, uh, it's being lifted by the wind and you're holding on to it with a tether. And so our kite is the same way. Once airborne, Makani's 85 foot long energy kite flies around autonomously, guided by computers. Crosswinds spin eight rotors producing electricity that's sent back to the ground through a tether. And its carbon fiber frame makes the kite extremely lightweight. Our energy kites are so lightweight, we can install them in deep water on floating platforms. And that means they can capture winds much further offshore, where other turbines can't. Last month in Norway, Makani successfully completed its first deep water offshore flight, but their kites won't be ready for market for several years. If your system is widely adopted, what kind of impact do you think it could potentially make? There are many areas around the world that really don't have a good resource for renewable power, but do have offshore wind resource. And so our lightweight kites create the possibility that we could tap that resource very economically and bring renewable power to hundreds of millions of people. Whether it's flying in a blimp, driving an 18-wheeler, or jumping out of a plane, a CNN hero is helping senior citizens seek the thrills they've always dreamed of. His name is Webb Wyman. His nonprofit organization is Jump. He says it's all about taking seniors from darkness to light. I tell seniors, live by two rules. There are no bad bucket list wishes. Ooh, there you go. And everyone should have a bucket list wish. For every bucket list fulfilled, there is a sense of accomplishment, a story that they get to take back to their community. It lifts their spirits. My name is Webb, and I help seniors achieve their dreams. Go! Woo! Woo! <laughs> 
my dad is a piece of work. <laughs> He's a 95-year-old veteran. He was in World War II, participated in the invasion of Normandy at D-Day. That's a crew. I'm on the right. He worked hard all his life, but he was always kind, always had friends, and would do anything for anybody. Give them the shirt off his back. All right, so the last number was B15. With Dad aging, he's slowing down. Got that. His body is not keeping up with his mind. Bingo. Bingo. <laughs> he wants to be the Energizer Bunny. I can't believe it. It aggravates him that he can't do what he used to be able to do. We're going to clear it out and do a new game. The reality of living in isolation is out there, and it's real. And that's really one of the driving forces for us to keep going. Drag the bucket list out of them. When he saw the balloon being blown up, and I looked at his face, his smile could have filled up the balloon. But it's in that moment that I know this is where I'm supposed to be. Hey, we're moving. It was just heartwarming to see him going up in that balloon. I think he's still smiling. I'm just so proud of him. <laughs> you keep smiling. That's, a, that's your only requirement. I looked at it like much more than a hot air balloon ride. Calm and beautiful. It was a moment in time to share a little space with two heroes. You got a good shot of the moon. Under the moon. It's a feeling that's indescribable. I could feel the joy in their heart. I could see the spark in their eye and feel the gratitude that fills the air. And I think knowing that they're feeling the same way is really all I needed to know this was a successful mission. Everybody okay? Woo! Yeah! A good time, Dad? That was something. He won't believe he's this old if he keeps doing adventurous things. This one's fly again. <laughs> it was something he'd never experienced before, and he'll never forget it, ever. Even in your 90s, you're still flying high and aim in large. I want to thank you. This was a great day. A Canadian fire department recently ordered 18 large pizzas for $300. They thought they'd called Alimo's Pizzeria in Alberta, Canada, where they're based, but instead they'd ordered from Alamo's Pizza in San Antonio, Texas. Oops. That's 2,300 miles away, so a bit far for delivery. So what they decided to do was donate the pizzas to two local fire stations in Texas. Firefighters there shared some pictures of themselves enjoying the pies, and now people from all over are donating pizzas to workers. Who wouldn't want a pizza that effort? For anyone in pepperoni need of a pick-me-up, these pizzas are making the rounds where slices of goodwill abound and folks don't want to miss the chance to dish out a gesture whose ingredients are kindness and generosity and is never too cheesy to pie it forward. I'm Carl Azus. Hope your weekend is fresh.